The Black Bull of Norway of the Blue Fairy Book. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Scott Mather. The Blue Fairy Book by Andrew Lang. The Black Bull of Norway. And many a hunting song they sung, and song of game and glee. Then tuned to plaintive strains their tongue, Of Scotland's Louvre and Lee, To wilder measures next they turn, The black, black bull of Norway. Sudden the tapers cease to burn, The minstrels cease to play. The Coot of Kilda by J. Leighton In Norway, long syne, there lived a certain lady, and she had three daughters. The oldest of them said to her mither, Mither, bake me a bannock, and roast me a collop, for I am gone awa to seek my fortune. Her mither did say, and the doctor gave awa to an old witch washerwife, and told her purpose. The old wife bade her stay that day, and gang and look out her back door, and see what she could see. She saw nacht the first day. The second day she did the same, and saw nacht. On the third day she looked again, and saw a coach and six coming along the road. She ran in and told the old wife what she saw. A wheel, quoth the old wife, yawns for you. So they took her into the coach and galloped off. The second doctor says to her mither, Mither, bake me a bannock and roast me a collop, for I'm gone awa to seek my fortune. Her mither did say, and awa she gave to the old wife, as her sister had done. On the third day she looked out of the back door, and saw a coach and four coming along the road. A wheel, quoth the old wife, yawns for you. So they took her in, and aft they set. The third doctor says to her mither, Mither, Bake me a bannock, and roast me a collop, for I'm gone awa to seek my fortune. Her mither did say, and awa she gave to the old witchwife. She bade her look out her back door and see what she could see. She did say, and when she came back, said she saw nacht. The second day she did the same, and saw nacht. The third day she looked again, and on coming back, said to the old wife, she saw nacht but a muckled black bull come roaring along the road. A wheel, quoth the old wife, yawns for you. On hearing this she was next to distracted with grief and terror, but she was lifted up and set on his back, and awa they went. Ay, they travelled, and on they travelled, till the lady grew faint with hunger. Eat out of my right lug, says the black bull, and drink out of my left lug, and set by your leavings. Say she did as he said, and was wonderfully refreshed. And lang they gaed, and sair they raid, till they came in sight of a very big and bonny castle. Yonder we maun be this night, quoth the bull, for my old brither lives yonder. And presently they were at the place. They lifted her off his back, and took her in, and sent him away to a park for the night. In the morning, when they brought the bull home, they took the lady into a fine shining parlour, and gave her a beautiful apple, telling her not to break it, till she was in the greatest strait ever mortal was in in the world, and that would bring her out. Again she was lifted on the bull's back. And after she had ridden far, and farer than I can tell, they came in sight to a far bonnier castle, and far farther awa than the last. Says the bull till her, Yonder we maun be the night, for my second brither lives yonder. And they were at the place directly. They lifted her down, and took her in, and sent the bull to the field for the night. In the morning they took the lady into a fine and rich room, and gave her the finest pear she had ever seen, bidding her not to break it till she was in the greatest strait ever mortal could be in, and that would get her out of it. Again she was lifted, and set on his back, and away they went. 
and lang they gaed and sair they raid till they came in sight to the far biggest castle and far farther staff they had yet seen we maun be yonder the night says the bull for my young brither lives yonder and they were there directly they lifted her down took her in and sent the bull to the field for the night in the mornin they took her into a room the finest of all and gied her a plum telling her not to break it till she was in the greatest strait mortal could be in and that would get her out it presently they brought hame the bull set the lady on his back and awa they went and aye they gaed, and on they raid, till they came to a dark and ugsome glen, where they stopped, and the lady lighted down. Says the bull to her, Here ye maun stay till I gang and fight the deal. Ye maun seat yourself on that stain, and move neither hand nor fit till I come back, else I never find ye again. And if everything round about ye turns blue, I hae beaten the deal. But should the things turn red, he'll hae conquered me. She set herself down on the stain, and by and by, all round her turned blue. Or come with joy, she lifted the a foot and crossed it o'er the ither. So glad was she that her companion was victorious. The bull returned, and sought for, but never could find her. Lang she sat, and aye she grat, till she was wearied. At last she raised and gaed awa, she kedna whar till. On she wandered, till she came to a great hill of glass, that she tried all she could to climb, but was not able. Round the bottom of the hill she gaed, sobbing and seeking a passage o'er, till at last she came to a smith's house, and the smith promised if she would serve him seven years, he would make her iron shoon wherewith she could climb o'er the glassy hill. At seven years' end she got her iron shoon, clam the glassy hill, and chanced to come to the old washerwife's habitation. There she was told of a gallant young knight that had given in some bloody sarks to wash, and where washed the sarks was to be his wife. The old wife had washed till she was tired, and then she set to her doctor, and baith washed, and they washed, and they better washed, in hopes of getting the young knight. But all ah, they could do, they could not bring out a stain. At length they set the stranger damosel to work, and whenever she began, the stains came out pure and clean. But the old wife made the knight believe it was her doctor had washed the sarks. So the knight and the eldest doctor were to be married. And the stranger damosel was distracted at the thought of it, for she was deeply in love with him. So she bethought her of her apple, and breaking it, found it filled with gold and precious jewelry, the richest she had ever seen. All these, she said to the eldest doctor, I will give you, on condition that you put off your marriage for a day, and allow me to go into his room alone at night. So the lady consented, but meanwhile the old wife had prepared a sleeping drink and given it to the knight, who drank it, and never waken till the next morning. The lee lang night, their damsel sabbed and sang. O oh, seven lang years I served for thee, the glassy hill I clam for thee, the bloody shirt I rang for thee, and wilt thou no walken and turn to me? Next day she kept now what to do for grief. She then brought the pear, and found it filled with jewelry far richer than the contents of the apple. With a jewel she bargained for permission to be a second knight in the young knight's chamber. But the old wife gied him a neither sleeping drink, and he again sleepeth till morning. All night she kept sighing and singing as before. 
seven lang years I served for thee, the glassy hill I clam for thee, the bloody shirt I rang for thee, and wilt thou no walken and turn to me? Still he sleepit, and she nearly lost hope altogether. But that day, when he was out at the hunting, somebody asked him what noise and moaning was yon they heard all last night in his bedchamber. He said he heard na ony noise, but they assured him there was say, and he resolved to keep waking that night to try what he could hear. That being the third night, and the damosel being between hope and despair, she brak her plum, and it held far the richest jewelry of the three. She bargained as before, and the old wife as before took in the sleeping drink to the young knight's chamber. But he told her he could not drink it that night without sweetening. And when she gave a wa for some honey to sweeten it with, he poured out the drink and say made the old wife think he had drunk it. They went to bed again, and the damosel began, as before, singing, Seven lang years I serve for thee, the glassy hill I clam for thee, the bloody shirt I rang for thee, and wilt thou no walken and turn to me? He heard, and turned to her, and she told him all that had befallen her, and he told her all that had happened to him. And he caused the old washerwife and her doctor to be burned. And they were married, and he and she are living happy till this day, for aught I can. End of the Black Bull of Norway